this is, this is, this is. Halloween candy. <laughs> uh, is that what you're doing? You're raiding the kids? I had like, I had a few things. Actually, it was the kids' stuff, and it was on the counter because the kids come over to the studio now and again and play video games on the PS4. So it's kind of a, hey, let's go to the studio and play video games. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dude, you know what I feel like uh, has been happening? And um, we haven't really talked about this on our show, but I keep mean, meaning to bring it up. Is it Halloween candy these days? People are so, and I, I guess it's like social media and just the accessibility to all your neighbors and all that kind of stuff, but people are so concerned with how they come off to the rest of the neighborhood that candy is like top quality. Like, who's giving out crap these days? Nobody. Nobody. Because nobody wants to be talked about. Like, people are like giving out full-size candy bars and, and uh, it's like gift cards here and there. It's just like, what, what are you doing? This is, this is a great time to be a kid. I agree because I just took, you know, we took the kids out and they got like a big chunk. Is it big chunk? Do you know what that is? A candy bar? Oh, yeah, yeah, Big yeah. hunk it's, or big chunk? I think it's big chunk. It's like a giant candy bar and it's taffy or some sort of like, I don't know what it is. It's like a thing. Is it, it's like is it big chunky? Big chunky. Uh, somebody knows. I mean, it's it's a very, <laughs> it's been around forever and it's still a thing. And then, and then uh, one of my other, well, one of my other kids. <laughs> How many kids do I have? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's not you. Uh, I have two. No kidding. <laughs> I have a soccer team. <laughs> but uh, the other one got got um, a giant, not just a regular. Uh, star, is it star kissed or sun kissed? Sun sun kissed. Sun kissed. What, what is the uh, sunburst? Ah. Uh, Starburst? Starburst. See, I... <laughs> God. I'm the worst. <laughs> Starburst. is orange juice, I think. I, yeah, see, I get all these brands and words mixed up. and That is For daily, second, by the like, way. That's man, very me. That's on brand. I thought, man, maybe your kid was getting two liters. That's that's a different sort of, sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, that would be weird. Yeah, like, um, <laughs> they should give out drinks. Like... Like for the, I have seen like there's been like Halloween memes where somebody will set out, uh, like a, I don't know, almost like a portable shot, like a sealed shot glass of like tequila, but I think it was like an oh. ad for a tequila company. You know, it was like oh, okay. and it said parents only. So it was like for the pa trick or treat for the parents. Yeah, we've done that a couple times. We didn't do it this year, but la uh, was it last year? Maybe a couple years ago. Um, what we do is we usually just, you know, we do the driveway fire pit kind of thing. And then somebody goes with the kiddos. And now they're kind of getting in the age where they don't want to be with mom and dad because we're not cool. So they want to do it with, like, their friends, you know. So we kind of hang out. My parents are older, you know. They're in their upper 70s. So they come over, and we have a big fire pit in the driveway. And we had a cooler where we just had, like, random beer and water that we would give out to the parents. And that was a hit. That was a hit. We haven't done it in the last year or two, but we did it for a couple of years there. And, man. It's a hit. But now, dude, I swear parents are legitimately, like, checking out everybody's uh, candy just to see who's given the off-brand crap. And there's just no off-brand stuff anymore. These kids have got it made. They came home. One of my kids came home with 7.8 pounds of candy. That's a lot of candy. She weighed it. <laughs> so what's what's the off-brands? I mean, I wouldn't even – I guess you wouldn't know the brands, right? That's the point. But is it, like, yeah. Chinese candy, Mexican candy – you know, there's like Mexican style candy that's kind of like super sugary, like isn't all candy sugary, but <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, like old yeah. school candy. I feel like Mexico Mexicans have old school candy, like just I've, traditional I've candy. I've never seen that. Now the cheap stuff here is like knockoff uh, Smarties, and Smarties are bad enough. I, even though I kind of I like, like Smarties. What? Yeah, you don't I'm like Smarties? Too. No, I do. You but think like, that's a garbage candy? No, one roll though. And you're like, you know what? Thank you. My sure. quota has been filled for a solid six months. I don't need 15 of them. And I feel Halloween like that's... is about like packing it out, you know? Yeah. I, 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 this is probably an unpopular opinion, but I feel like I'm good with just like a couple of each thing. Like I like Score and Heath, Heath bars. Just a little oh. one is good. Love that stuff. Uh, Butterfinger. Quality. Yeah, see, that's all, that's all brand name. You're that's not getting that name. like random orange and black... Uh, uh, Werther's looking things, you know, you know those things that sometimes we would get when we were kids. Like yeah. it was just like sprinkled in. 
And oh, then like yeah, the real chalky, there was one that was like orange. It was almost like saltwater taffy, but really cheap saltwater taffy. Cause if, cause saltwater taffy seems expensive when you go to the mall and there's that machine that's, that's yeah. stretching the taffy, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. and, and you're like, Ooh, I want some of that, you know? And then they yeah, charge well, that's you. That's an expensive process. It is. It is. You're like, okay, <laughs> this is, I can see why this is so expensive. And they're like $2 for one little piece. Like, okay. But like this stuff, you get in the you know the cheap ones. It's chalky. It's got this chalkiness to it. And you're like, uh, I don't know. This is, this ain't right. Yeah, that's where those knockoff uh, Smarties come in. It's just chalk with some sort of edible plastics in in the center. Dude, the greatest candy bar, uh, and everybody in St. Louis knows this now because I keep talking about it on the radio. And there's only one place that sells it because it's not distributed here in the U.S. It's a Cadbury product. So I guess I guess that's a British company, but it's okay. a British candy, and maybe you've had this on our uh, adventures or your adventures over in England. It's called a picnic bar. Picnic and it just looks like a candy. Yeah, it's in a purple wrapper, and it comes from England, and like you have to like specialty order it. So I've it's one of those like English. You've seen this? I've seen it in England, the, 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 the purple bar, but I've never tried it. Dude, I don't think I would try greatest. something called picnic bar. <laughs> No, brother. What? what? <laughs> Sounds terrible. What is it like what? a like a ham sandwich? Nah, dude. It's it's a chocolate bar. that kind of it, it's not a very pretty looking bar, but it's like I don't know <laughs> what it's got. It's, it. got. it's got chocolate and caramel and peanuts and raisins and something else. And now I know you're probably gonna be like, "Oh, I don't like raisins." I'm not. No, I do that. like but raisins, I, but do they I take over the whole candy bar? That's an no. interesting. I've never had a raisin candy bar. Dude, it's perfect. It's a perfect blend. They have nailed the perfect candy bar, and they're holding it for themselves. But if you, if you get if you can order them, and we've had people in St. Louis like damn near put them out of business because uh, they've been ordering them and shipping them uh, into St. Louis. And everybody, well, for the most part, everybody says they agree with me. Greatest candy bar of all time. This is a weird St. Louis thing, and from the well, UK, of course. Yeah, well, there's one like like tiny like. Uh, there's like an old couple in their 80s that runs like a um, what do you call it like a like an English shop where you get like English stuff English uh, biscuits and mm -hmm. uh, and hats and like Guinness we have the Mexican and, shop and the the Asian food shop here in yeah, Bremerton yeah it's it's less of a food shop and more of like things tchotchkes and tchotchkes yeah just just English crap uh, but uh, they do tea and candy and clear them out dude they can't keep a picnic bar stocked today. wow a lot of union jacks in that store everywhere everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hanging out of the, the house. it's like in a house the shop is so that's so weird that one can is there is there another like runner-up that's a good uk candy that you, that's easier to get like what's the next best thing and there's nothing the like only? that in the u.s right like what what do we have for raisins for candy we have one thing i think what I might have to Google Raisinets. this. Raisinets? Raisinets. That's what I was thinking. Raisinets. Yeah, the, ch the chocolate covered or the yogurt covered. And those are good in a movie theater. Picnic I've bar. never. Yeah. Never. Picnic bar slaps, though. Have you had an arrow bar? Remember arrow. those? Like the mint arrow? Uh, A E R O? I don't think I have. Those are good. Oh, brother. Is that English? Is that English? Ice. I'm telling you. So. Well, I gotta say, Heath bars. Heath bars are quality. That toffee, something about that. Um, what else do I? I've always been a fan of of Butterfinger. Although you know, some people can't can't stand Butterfinger because it's so sugary and it gets in your teeth like that. Like, um, that's a wrestling. Move. We uh, we learned today. That's a wrestling move. Candy. What a Butterfinger? No, it's a wrestling. It's a wrestling match. Like, it's a fight. You know, like when you eat a Butterfinger, you're like, oh, this is going to be so good. And then halfway through, you're like, ah, oh, shit, I'm fighting it. Yeah. You know, you're like, it's, it's a wrestling match between your molars and whatever that crap is. Yes. Your Butterfinger. Like I was doing we learned, right when we got on. <laughs> yeah. We, if it yeah, was a wrestling we, move, though, what would the Butterfingers be? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to know. It's an adult show. <laughs> yeah. That is not kid friendly, yo. <laughs> uh, yes. So, I mean, that's the thing is like St. Louis kind of has these niche, uh, super popular things like the English store or UK store. Maybe that's just like with you and your your radio show crowd. Like, but you guys get on a ton of different like weird things that you obsess over. 
So is there anything else like that going on in St. Louis? Uh, as far as food goes? It doesn't have to be food. Um, I mean, we can, we, can, we can move on from candy, but... There's a lot of stuff. There's a... Uh... I mean, Cardinals baseball is is an obsession here. Hopefully, the MLS team that we're getting here in a couple of years, uh, or in a, I guess a can year. Can I now. can I just raise my hand for a second about the St. Louis Cardinals? Right, that's the baseball team. Yeah, I always yeah. get it mixed up with the the other Cardinals, and I'm uh, I'm like, oh, is St. Louis playing? You know, and I'm talking about Arizona Cardinals, the football team. Oh right. Um, and then, but also the Arizona Cardinals have been a different city many times. Like they were yeah. some, they were somewhere else, and then St. Louis, St. Louis, St. Louis, were they in St. Louis? Because St. Louis Rams yeah. is sort of like what I'm used to seeing, football. Yeah, right. When, when I was a kid, the Arizona Cardinals were the St. Louis Cardinals, so we had the Cardinals football team and the Cardinals baseball team when I was a kid. That makes so much sense. Yeah. Also, very confusing. Yeah, so they, <laughs> they left in the late '80s and went to Arizona and started playing in Phoenix or outside of Phoenix or whatever it was. But that was a St. Louis team for uh, was, quite quite some time. Do you remember? And do then you, the, were you old enough to like kind of like know about it back then? Do you remember it being a weird oh yeah thing? for sure. Was it weird that yeah, both do, teams are the the same mascot? Uh, to me, I mean, it made sense. It was like the Cardinals are a St. Louis thing, period. So all That's of our it. teams are just Cardinals. And was and, it the uh, same logo? And, Slightly? Uh, like, uh, it was this, you same mean the same mascot? Arizona Cardinal logo? The, well, yeah, like, to, totally the same. Yeah. Totally the same. Same colors, same everything. So my dad was like a, a football coach and a football player, and he played in college, and he actually played in college for a Cardinals team. So he had like the uniform that looked just like the St. Louis Cardinals. And I figured my dad was a part of the Cardinals, but it was like, it was a, uh, it was just a St. Louis thing to have birds, you know, Cardinals. And uh, when we had a basketball team in the fifties, it was the Hawks. So it was kind of like, oh, it must be a bird thing. We got a lot of birds in this in this town. <laughs> Where are the birds at? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Other than that, like we, we're pretty prideful about our toasted ravioli, our thin crust pizza. Uh, what else? What else? Um, I a like a thin crust. What is it? What is the difference between like a St. Louis thin crust pizza to a New York style pizza? So it's thinner, thin crust, more thin. Uh, it it probably is a little bit thinner, but it's about the cheese. Our our sauce and cheese ratio is slightly different, and the cheese is a Provel cheese. And if you don't know what a Provel cheese is, first of all, cheese purists are going to be like, "That's a cheese product. That's not uh. a real cheese." Yeah, it is a cheese like, product. Like, yeah. yeah, it's provolone and something else, and they have babies called Provel, and that is the cheese you put on St. Louis pizza, and it's the jam. And if you love it, you love it. If you love it, you fight for it. Hey, it's if on cheese.com. I mean, so. Oh, for real? <laughs> it's on yeah, cheese.com. Like like, Bro, it's not a real cheese. <laughs> it's a cheese. I mean, it's an American cheese produced through a combination of many different cheeses, mainly cheddar, Swiss, and provolone, which that sounds amazing to me, to be honest. Dude, it's <laughs> amazing. It's beautiful. Our pizza is beautiful. This Chicago bullshit, what are you trying to do? Kill somebody that's like this thick? Oh, <laughs> That's a meal. It's like, yeah. I mean, I I like both styles. I like a Chicago thick, but honestly, I need to I need to check this St. Louis out because um, I always thought, okay, St. Louis has kind of like got a little barbecue thing going on, right? Don't you have yeah. that too? I've yeah, never heard of the toast, toasted ravioli and, and thin crust pizza, but what? Where have you been? You've just been sweeping right through St. Louis without having any of our gold nuggets, man. That's yeah. our stuff. Yeah. Toasted uh, Ravs. It's, if if we could redo the flag, even though we do have a beautiful city flag, even though it's not an official city flag, it would have toasted raviolis on it for um, sure. It, nice. I, you know that reminds <laughs> me. Last time Goldfinger we played in St. Louis, we went out to dinner. All of us. We went out to a nice restaurant. Great. We did not have toasted ravioli. Now you're right. That's a big you're fail. Right. Yeah, that was a fail on my part. I apologize. I apologize. Well, you guys were having such a great day. I didn't want to throw any curveballs at you or nothing. Yeah, yeah, you didn't want to. That was fun. Pick any fights. <laughs> that was a nice place, though. That that place is the uh, is the place that had that weird. Um, uh, there was like they put something in front of me. Remember, it was like a uh, shoot. What's a cauliflower? It was like a cauliflower thing that was fried, and you guys were having none of that. If you remember that, uh, was like that a place, vegan dish. Uh, or something? I like think so. Cauliflower. Yeah, it's a veg vegetarian something or other. 
I mean, I like cauliflower, but I'm not going to go to a really nice restaurant and order it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good point. Boy, that was on. <laughs> that was on you. <laughs> you guys are ripping into all these awesome meals, and I'm over here with like a cauliflower cup. <laughs> I did that one time. I went to this really nice meal. So, like a friend of mine took me out in Hollywood. This is years ago, but we, we went to this nice place and. They had beef stroganoff on the menu, and I was like, "Oh, I used to have that when I was a kid. I wonder if it's still good." Like hamburger helper. <laughs> and I ordered it, and it tasted exactly like it did when I was a kid. And I was like, "Okay, I thought it was gonna be like different or better. It's still okay, but I I, I messed up. <laughs> that was on me. Yeah, my yeah. bad." And so now I think about that when I got to eat. I think about that moment. <laughs> You were trying. You were trying to get like the pinnacle of the dish, like what we've all been emulating this whole time, and that yeah. was supposed to be it. That's what I thought. Yeah, absolutely. But sometimes home cooked is just exactly that. It's good. It's good home cooked meals, and you know. Our barbecue. Our barbecue is slamming, dude. St. Louis has got, got uh, as far as like you know per capita. I think we rank top five as far as food because we have a lot of chefs that moved here. We have a lot of people that were from here and they worked in LA or they worked in New York or over in Europe and then they came back here and kind of set up shop um, you'd be surprised like that's one of our no matter what kind of BS negative things are happening in St. Louis our food is always good oh hell yeah the food is amazing in St. Louis <laughs> not necessarily at the airport L let me just make that caveat yep. <laughs> don't eat at the airport, airport if, you, if you can our airport doesn't count our airport is the worst airport in the country and I, I will apologize that uh, for that forever. I'm so sorry for anybody that comes here. <laughs> and dude, that's one of my rants. <laughs> God, the goddamn airport, dude. Think about that. Like, okay, Mike Carrera doesn't know about toasted ravs from St. Louis. Doesn't right. know about thin crust pizza from St. Louis. You probably come through our airport, I don't know, 50 times. Probably, m maybe more. Maybe 150 times. That's our business card. Hey, welcome to St. Louis. You're only going to be here for a few minutes. I understand. And there's not many things to look out of the window, but at least we're going to treat you with a nice... Uh, Amenity-filled, uh, warm, welcoming, easy to navigate. Uh, we'll get you your luggage in a few minutes sort of airport. Nah, dude, we blow it at every single corner with our airport, and it's the worst. It hurts my feelings so bad because this is such a cool town, and most people are like, St. Louis sucks ass. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, what have you seen? They're like, oh, I've been through that airport a few times. That's our business card. That's us. You, you know, you tell no lies. Um, as a... Uh... A businessman going through town, I got to say, it's one of the worst because <laughs> we'll get back to the barbecue in a second, but I, one of the last few times I was there, to be honest, I think I was trying to get food and it took so long, I was like, okay, I'm going to go to another place. And I went to this other place down the, the causeway, down the whatever, uh, and I'm waiting and I see the manager from the other restaurant show up there. So I'm like, oh, hell. Everybody's working at the same, you know, it's just like flowing through. It's all owned by the same management company or whatever. I'm like, yeah, eh, I'm, I'm out of here. And I just probably found a <laughs> snack machine or something. But that was my last ex experience that I remember. But real quick, and then barbecue, because I, I want to talk St. Louis barbecue. But <laughs> Tom Wisniewski, guitar player, uh, MXPX, he uh, famously, we had a really rough, flight into St. Louis. We were playing the Point Fest years ago. And oh, yeah. we he was not a good flyer. Very scared of flying. Very on edge, let's say. And so he starts hitting the bottle right away. Excuse me, Jack Daniels Coke, please. They start feeding him Jack Daniels and Coke the whole flight. Like he doesn't stop. <laughs> and so by the time we're there, he's wasted. And then he, we get off the flight and of course you're on the ground, you get more drunk. And it all comes rushing. And as we, as we get off, and we're leaving the gate, um, there's restaurants that have tables with glass windows in the St. Louis airport. <laughs> well, that's right where we got off, and Tom could not make it to the bathroom. He goes right up to the window and pukes right into the window. And there's people eating their oh, breakfast oh or gosh. whatever. <laughs> Dude. Uh, through the window? Like into the restaurant? No, no, no. Onto the window. Onto the glass. Onto the glass of the window. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So it was just like a <laughs> like a zoo experience for these people. Oh, my gosh. 
You got to squeegee that off. Oh, nasty, dude. That was insane. I was mortified. I, I, I can't believe. I mean, nothing happened. He just moved on, went to the bathroom, cleaned up, and we went to, you know, said sorry. <laughs> yeah. Went to the oh, hotel. They probably, they probably cleaned it up three days later. Oh, like, <laughs> yeah. Like, and it's not even the employee's fault necessarily, but because they're so unhappy. I don't know what they have to deal with, but I imagine if you had to work there, you'd last, go there every day. Be a actually, nightmare. La- last time I was there, uh, it was still there. The, the puke. <laughs> I'm kidding, but <laughs> but I do look at the window every time. Well, not I'm probably not every time, but quite a few times I look at the window. We're like, oh, yeah, that's the window. <laughs> and I won't even be thinking of it until I see the window. Yeah, we it got hit by a tornado uh, not long ago. I'd say um, two or three years ago, and it did it didn't like you know level the airport or nothing, but it did a lot of damage. And honestly, I thought, oh man, this might be a blessing in disguise. This might be where they go. Okay, listen, we're gonna take all this money from uh, uh, renovating this thing and fixing it up, and maybe we'll just move it. Maybe we'll start over. Let's just go somewhere else because it's like kind of hemmed in. And it can't really grow. How's the city mm-hmm. supposed to grow if the airport can't grow? And uh, I was like, maybe they'll pull a Denver and like pick a spot in some farmland just a little bit out here. Oh, sorry, we got to drive 30 or 40 minutes now, but we're going to have this big, badass airport that we can grow into just like Denver did. But no, we didn't do that. We, uh, we just fixed the old piece of shit that's already there. <laughs> Man, it's crazy. I mean, there's some airports that are... I don't know if this is interesting to people, but some airports like Houston is super modern. You go into the into the United or even the American um, terminals, and everything screens like um, oh, not yeah. even iPads, but like some some are iPads, but some are like actual like bigger screens, like with menus and stuff. And you order your food through the iPad and or whatever the iPad, you know that version of the iPad, the tablets. Um, it's super. You're like, whoa, the future is here. But then you go to like St. Louis, and it's like, never mind. Well, St. Louis, ain't, yeah. uh, the future is not here. Oh wow, the 1950s are here. <laughs> but 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 you know you know at, while we're picking on St. Louis, I gotta say actually it's got a really cool and growing tech sector um, downtown. A lot of companies are, and maybe it. I don't know what's been happening in the last year or so, but I actually attended you know one of those tech type uh, conventions and spoke at it about like small business and being an entrepreneur and stuff like that but I had a good time met a lot of really cool interesting people and I know it's hard to believe because I was in St. Louis but I had a good time for is yeah, it dude, is it no, a St. four hands uh, beer what is it four hands it? brewery yeah yeah phenomenal. good stuff we have great so company. many great businesses here everything except for the airport is awesome <laughs> Once you get past the airport, like this is a great place to be. But like I said, like you were talking about um, a lot of these uh, tech companies, there's a lot of great startups, a lot of good small business here from the microbreweries to the barbecue spots to whatever. There's a lot of great minds and great work happening here. And that's the that's that's where I actually am somewhat passionate about the uh, the airport thing. And, and it's not a joke is because that deserves to stay here. And we're trying to hold on to that kind of stuff and make this a better and a bigger city. Uh, and it's not going to happen if the airport is uh, is how it is. But yeah, dude, you're right. This is this is a cool place. Uh, we have the seasons because not everybody can do the California thing or even afford the, the the California thing or or somewhere else where there's there's uh, there's less seasons. Um, I find that a good thing. The the seasons that is, and like you said, from from four hands, those guys they're not just a beer company. Like they 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 support a lot of people, a lot of uh, tech folks and small businesses here and musicians and they sponsored my band and they sponsored charity events that my band has been a part of and um, I mean there's just a lot of that going on and I'm happy to hear that you've had that experience here it blows my mind you didn't have any toasted rabbit while you were here no uh, I always end up going down the street like wherever we're playing it's usually in the downtown area um, and I go to the barbecue place I can't remember the name of it but they've always been so amazing um, it's a Pappies? Bar- Pappies I think it's Pappies yeah is it yeah. Pappy's, uh, usually it's a pretty decent line. It's really popular, great food. Are they known for ribs? Is St. Louis known for ribs primarily? Because I know Texas barbecue is known for like beef brisket. Their brisket is, is sort of like world class. And uh, Memphis is probably maybe pork ribs or something like that. Or 
you know, a pork style of barbecue. I don't know if St. Louis has a, I've heard of St. Louis ribs being a thing. Is that a th- Yeah. Know? Oh, for, for sure. I mean, uh, a lot of, there's a lot of history in, in this town with barbecue and each place kind of offers a different thing, but yeah, there's, mm. there's a lot of ribs. We have a, a barbecue festival here. That's always huge and continues to grow. I'm not sure what's happened to it since, uh, since the pandemic and all that, but yeah, man, this is a this is an underrated spot that is always uh, uh, sort of lost in the shuffle of the Memphis Kansas City thing, you know, because mm-hmm. it's like a perfect Bermuda Triangle of St. Louis, Memphis, Kansas City, because we all offer something really different, and the sauces are so very different, you know, because we have a lot of French settlement stuff in here, obviously St. Louis, mm-hmm. uh, but there's a there's a lot of food history in this place from everything from the World's Fair to its beginning and. Uh, you know, 100, 200 years before that. Man, food. Everything revolves around food, food doesn't it? Like, if yeah. you think about the yeah. city, you think about, is, it, is there good food there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And dude, and, and like you said, the the two things that I think of when somebody, uh, well, the three things. Three things that some, if somebody <laughs> just spouted off uh, a, a random city name, I would think of the food, the venue that I played there the most, you know, and, and its surrounding area, mm-hmm. and the airport. And like you said, with Houston, I, all I think of now with Minneapolis is, damn man, they really improved their airport. Like that, that's uh, that iPad thing is is the future. But that's what you think of, and then you come here and it's it's bass backwards. <laughs> such a such a bummer. If I could just get you off the plane and a few miles out, I could show you some badass food. And I even live next to the airport too. And those neighborhoods are fine. It's just, uh, yeah. It's Finland, amazing. by the way, has amazing airport. Well, an amazing airport. I've only been to the one, but Finland, oh man. Great airport. Uh, I I think I stopped in Helsinki, Iceland, or is that Greenland? I don't know which one that is, but uh, I may be wrong altogether. Maybe Helsinki is Finland. Um, but yeah, I I that airport. You're just like you feel like you're in a in a dystopian movie, but you're on the lucky side. You're rich or you're a bad guy. <laughs> so like you're like it's like Star Wars in a way where like. Uh, you know, you're on the Death Star in the halls of the Death Star. Everything's just so uh, modern and like, uh, you know, European and, yeah. and <laughs> that's badass. Norwegian. Have you been or, to the Beijing one? Beijing, uh, I have. I don't remember. I don't remember it much because I was just thinking about don't get detained, don't get, you know, or whatever. Oh, but, yeah. but I have been to Beijing. Yeah, uh, we flew. We flew and we've been there once. We flew to China and did a trip years ago, but. That that airport is sick because it was built for the Olympics or it was redone for the Olympics. So it was I enormous. was there before that, I think, honestly. Oh, I think, dude. Um, no, that's a that's a cool one. I have only been to the Shanghai one once, and that's when we were detained, detained. And, <laughs> and sent out of the country, brother. Like that yeah. was that was not good. I, I've been deported from the Shanghai airport. Beautiful though, it looked very nice. See, I think the basement was lovely. Nice, <laughs> nice, love that. And for those that want to hear that story. Uh, I mean, you can tell it again if you want, but it was on. I, want, I think the last time you were on, you told that story, because we were talking about traveling and oh, stuff. Yeah? But one of the times when you we were probably on tour with Goldfinger and just sitting around doing the podcast, I think you told that story. Yeah. But um, look, look that up. It's that a great was, story. I still don't think I'm allowed back. I don't. I really don't know. I don't, at this point, do you want to be? Did you just hear that that the Pentagon is super worried and just like publicly announced that China has been stocking up their nuclear warheads i hate to be a weird bringer of weird news but but it's kind of like whoa this is like the arms race is heating up again yeah in a weird crazy way yeah and all i could think of is like okay it's going to be like the 1980s again but right like with russia you know in the cold war but but we're way disadvantaged i feel like (laughs) yeah that sucks man that sucks and we're in infighting, the infighting is what's so such a bummer here. I feel like that's our that's our true weakness, man. That'll end real quick but, if I mean, if something bigger happens in the world, you know. I think. I mean, I, I don't want I don't something to happen, but yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't know, man. I feel like everybody's turned on each other in such a impassioned way that it's uh, just a dangerous, dangerous place. A- answering your question though about going back to China. Of course, I would love to go back. I I, I, I want to go anywhere and everywhere I can. Obviously, safety is paramount. But um, would you I go? Loved, let me ask every you a question. Minute I was in China. Would you go somewhere that you was maybe aside? Let's say aside from touring. Let's say just traveling because you travel a lot too. But um, 
Would you go somewhere that was dangerous? Like, uh, I like, have. Like I in like... North Korea or Pakistan or... Uh, North Korea, no. Um, <laughs> I know, that's I not... Think a... <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's anything there for me except for danger. Um, Pakistan, I, I have... A, a, actually, uh, we, we know a family that's that lives here that's in Pakistan right now and, and going through a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I don't know if there's anything there for me either, but um, I feel like when we toured... Uh, see, I don't. I'm sure some of your fans are from here. Um, I feel like the first time we went to a particular island, it was very, very dangerous. That, that being said, uh, my second time back was a little bit better. Uh, but after the first time, so you must be talking about up, Japan. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Uh, well, <laughs> we, I, we went. We went to a show where they told us that we have to have we have to do a um, uh, a press conference because. The business is so shady there. The concert business is so shady that you have to prove that you're actually in town for them to be able to sell a ticket because all these p- people were getting ripped off. They would do these billboards with, mm-hmm. hey, Metallica or MXPX is coming to town. Here's how to get tickets. And then you had no idea. It was just a fake thing. It was like right. a fraud, right? Yeah, that's happened so, a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so when we showed up at this place, we had these billboards everywhere, and we're like, holy crap, we're huge. This is going to be insane. And they're doing a press conference. Turns out the press conference was enormous, and they had dozens and dozens of reporters there to prove that we were there, which was wild, right? And yeah. uh, we didn't know that was going to happen, so we were drinking a lot. <laughs> so we were hammered for this press conference because we thought it was like a formality or something weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then as we're approaching the, the hotel – they stopped our bus multiple times and were looking under with mirrors and they had dogs and all that kind of stuff. And that's fine, you know, whatever. And then we started asking questions and actually getting real answers from one of the uh, the handlers that was with us. And he was kind of sneaking us information because it was, it was frowned upon to tell us what was going on. And it turned out the hotel we were staying in had just switched its name because it had been bombed two months before. Mm-hmm. Two months, man. Like two months. And this is like a palace. Like this is a crazy nice you know, five diamond or whatever it is, triangles. Uh, sort five of, triangles, uh, yeah. So, five triangles sort of hotel, right? And in the room, so we found out it's been bombed. We mm-hmm. found out that they took the name off of it, the, uh, a, a very big hotel chain here with a very famous name, took their name off of it. And uh, we were instructed not to leave our rooms, and we were forbidden to leave the resort. So that kind of throws things a little different, you know, t- to me, I, I like walking around. You and me, we're partners. Yeah. We like walking around. That's our thing. Yeah. So we couldn't do that. And in the room, there was a sign on the mirror that said, don't let the water touch your lips. Oh, God. Then, <laughs> then I fill up the shower. <laughs> I turn the shower on and it doesn't drain. It fills up with water. So I got to turn it off real quick. And then I was like, well, I guess I'll take a bath. So the bathtub, that wouldn't drain either. And it was brown water. Then... We notice like there's a really weird chair, or there's a there's a chair and a lamp and a really really bizarre spot for the room because we've been in a thousand hotel rooms. We know what they're supposed to look like. We move the lamp and there's a big blood stain. Like oh. I mean, like somebody <laughs> died in yeah. this room. And yeah. then there was a giant bonfire outside of our window that was like s- swiftly. Uh, uh, came upon by the military, by, like, people in military fatigues. So, like, that whole experience, I was like, man, I don't need to be back here. I don't, I'm not sure I want to come back here. And the show was crazy. Mm-hmm. Gear was stolen off the stage. Uh, there was 3,000 people there. It was wild, dude. You ever had anything like that? You know, I have, but not quite to the extent that you're talking about. Uh, I've never been told to, like, stay in your room. You can't come out. But there's been cities where... It was like, don't go walking on the street, you know, by yourself. Uh, Bogota is one of them. Bogota, Colombia, uh, some some cities in in Brazil, depending on where you are. Um, right. You know, a couple of my guys got chased out of a store, like got followed and and ultimately chased. They were trying to rob them, but they lost them in the night. You know, it was nighttime. <clears throat> Things like that in Brazil. But I know what you're talking about. I, I experienced the. We experienced the the mirrors looking underneath the bus or the car for the bombs, you know, that kind of thing. I think we stayed at the same place, maybe not the same place you played, 
or stayed or whatever, but we had stayed there like a couple times. So it was like, okay, maybe this is where all bands always stay. And we stayed there years and years ago, and then we stayed there just the last time we were there. Can we just say we're talking about Indonesia? I would assume. Sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're, talking about, you're talking about that Hilton, or it used to be a Hilton. Yes, now yes, Hilton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were there just like within like eight or nine weeks of a bombing. That's And that's rough. frightening, yeah. man. And here's the, the, the issue that we had is that we found out about it after we were on the property. Like somebody should have probably <laughs> given us a heads up, at least an option to know. Yeah, <laughs> you yes. You know what I'm saying? That's, yes. That was like the, wait a second, is this shady? Is this... Is, should should but, shouldn't that information have been given? I think when you were there, it should have been given because when we were there, things were there. More time had passed. Like for one, I think <clears throat> I think we had gone there after, so um, after you and what I'm saying, and I just didn't happen to get a room that had a blood stain on the carpet. I guess luckily, but but um, you know we we stayed there and. Everything had kind of been okay. Like, we didn't go out and walk around much. We did a little bit, but right outside the hotel, there's, like, a big park. And, like, on the, in the backside of the hotel, there's a big park where there's, like, tons of little, I don't know, like, kiosks, but, like, portable kiosks. Like, little people selling little tchotchkes and candy oh, yeah. and, and things like that. And it's just a ton of that. So there's, like, a lot of, you know, some homeless people, like, a lot of poor people and then beyond that there was this big mall i remember going and this is the first time we went to to indonesia which was forever ago and we went to the mall i remember seeing one other white guy among all the you know brown people brown brown faces in the crowd and it was like oh yeah there's a white guy over there <laughs> and just laughing you know <laughs> making a joke about it and then realizing the guy didn't speak english he didn't understand what we were saying so we're like yeah. Okay. Like he's basically, you know, like we're on our own. <laughs> yeah. 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 And the crazy thing is, like, the fans are awesome. The show was, yes, it was, was great. bizarre, but memorable and awesome. And then you know, we were all we were yeah we were so freaked out that we said we weren't going to go back. But then we did go back. And the second time we stayed in a different place. We went to that mall you're talking about, and it was awesome. Like it, it, we got to go to a radio station the second time, I think, and. Uh, and talk to some people. We actually like got to engage with some fans and, and some mm. people in, in this in the city. And then we went to a different island and played an even crazier show over there. Uh, and it and it was great. But that first time shook us up pretty bad. It shook us up pretty bad. That felt dangerous. And I don't even know. And we I guess we never know what the level of danger is around us at any given time. But that one felt pretty extreme. It yeah. felt pretty extreme. Yeah, I mean that that seems pretty extreme to me. You know that that seems like um, we were in Moscow. T to be honest, like we've been in Moscow a bunch of times, and I've been there a bunch of times. But I've I've only I mean I've never felt super in danger. You know, I've always been like with somebody usually, so that's obviously smart. But but there's never been like a time like I've had worse times in the UK where like I was like in a car chilling at night. You know, we're in in a car. It was it was our tour van. I was in the tour van, and somebody comes. Says, These two guys come by and they start knocking on the door and they and they go, "We can take everything from you right now, but we're gonna let. But you're lucky tonight." Blah blah blah. Like shit. I was like, <laughs> freaked out. You know, I was like, "What the what? You're right because I don't have any weapons on me. I wasn't really thinking. Right. London is a, a real hard town. You know, it probably can be right." But uh, <laughs> London town, uh, but yeah. like things like that. It's funny. It's like you could that could happen in Bremerton. People, you know, years ago there was a story of this guy walking around Bremerton just stabbing random strangers. You know, what? some of them died, some of them didn't. But you're just like not expecting, just walking. Doo -doo -doo, somebody ch -ch -ch -ch, like what? You know, like that's not something you expect to encounter when you're walking down the street. So you're yeah, very right. It's I you're right, though. I mean, going back to Indonesia and, and other places, there's even the, the press conference aspect of it. You know, the fact that they're so prone to getting ripped off to crime, to corruption. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to do things a little differently you know, than, than you would normally, right? The trust isn't quite there, uh, you know, and 
you know, we in Brazil we had to do that. I'm sure you had to do some press yeah. conferences in Brazil. You probably just didn't realize that's why you were like, no, we're just a big deal here. <laughs> but which you are, right. which you are. But uh, but yeah, you know those those types of situations where they're just all right. Take a picture. Like as soon as you get get to the, uh, we even do that with Goldfinger when we show up in Europe or show up in the UK. A lot of times the promoter will, or whoever the promoter, the, whoever's you know picking us up from the airport will like take a picture, and post that on the on the Facebook or whatever. Like that's still a thing, kind of like in in all aspects of of some places. Yeah. But I think it's any time where you're coming from such a long distance and you haven't done it really very often. Say like play this city. They want to just yeah. they they want to cover their asses and prove it, but uh, it's a trip though because, you know, everywhere, you know, you do things differently. People do things differently. Yet, the shows are awesome. The fans are awesome. People love mm -hmm. the music. You know, it's all about the music, and that's that's so universal. Which, psh, I mean, that's why we've been able to to live this life. Is is if it was only like. 300 people can like your band or something, you know, like, <laughs> but it's, it's just as much as you want to just keep going and keep traveling, you know, people, new people discover you, but, yeah. uh, right. yeah, anyway, uh, sorry, right. I went off on a tangent, but going back to Indonesia, we, we went actually in 2017, so fairly recently and had a great time. Um, didn't feel dangerous. It was just the, uh, the electricity of the of the the crowd it's a little it's a little uh insane at times you know but that's why you have security yeah. and and you do what you got to do yeah we had some crazy shows there we had a one of probably one of the most passionate intense shows i remember was in makassar a uh, different island there but jumping over to brazil you kind of sparked a memory man like as far as like being in danger and not necessarily knowing it uh, we we had one of those moments where we were like hanging out with some friends. We got a bunch of friends down there in Rio, and it was the first time we had been to Rio. And our hotel was like, I don't know, like four blocks. Like I could see it. And we got ready to go over, and they're like, No, no, what are you what are we doing? You got to take our car. And I was like, Dude, yeah. it's right there. So I was walking around here earlier, and they're like, No, no, no. The the two blocks between us and that building are that you don't go there. And we went in a bulletproof car. For four blocks, three, four blocks. Now, this was also when there was a lot of protesting going on and all that kind of stuff uh, about the Olympics or World Cup or something. This was a few years before they were voting on that or something. Mm -hmm. um, but the other one, dude, is and, – and and I hate to go back to, like, corrupt promoters and stuff, but uh, <laughs> nah, I love those it. scenarios <laughs> that apparently happens. Dude, we should run, like, a master class for young bands that are like, oh, hey, you're doing your first international tour. Here's what to know. Here's the food to try. Here's the people to speak to. You, you know what I mean? We should do that and warn them about different things. Because right. I wish somebody would have just told us that. But we were in Brazil. We played a show. The whole thing's been set out. And you, this is one of those before, like, they, you know, paid in advance or whatever. So nobody's been paid or none of that stuff. And uh, this guy had been building a history, I guess, with our agent and some other stuff. So, like, ah, we're going we're gonna to roll the dice here and play four or five shows down there. And it was all mapped out, and you fly from city to city because they were far enough away. Mm -hmm. And we were hitting Argentina in the time, I, I believe. And uh, we uh, we play the first show, and the guy says, oh, hey, there's a strike. And I'm doing the quote-unquote strike at the airport, and your, all your flights have been canceled. We have to rent you a bus. And we're like, whoa, 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 are you serious? And if, this is like pre – it's probably pre-iPhone, so like mm -hmm. the internet is not – right here at our fingers so we can look up a strike at the airport or something and uh we get on this like they give us a van or something and we got to drive nine hours to the next town and it was a total pain in the ass and sucked but you know you roll with the punches like we always do right mike yeah and we roll with the punches we get there and then all of a sudden the show we don't get on stage until 1 30 because one of the other one of the, uh, some local band showed up and locked the security outside. And then when we were supposed to take the stage, they ran up, threw up their gear, and played for 40 minutes. Are you kidding me? No. So that so that, that happened. That happened? Oh, that happened. <laughs> we didn't take the stage until like 1 or one thirty. Because so a band the locked the security out and got on stage. like the A band? Yeah, a band showed up and said, oh, we got 1,000 people here. Did they have guns or what? People. 
I don't know, brother. We got locked in our dressing room. So we were just like, oh, God. what? So you got I guess locked in your dress? You felt like, so, is this worth a fight or should I just le let it go? It wasn't basically. worth a fight. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah like, it wasn't worth it. So we're like, ah, okay. You know, as long as our crowd sticks around, I guess, at which they did. What the fuck? I don't know. The laws are so weird. Like nothing closes or nothing. So oh we my finally God. <laughs> in the show at 3 a.m. or something. And uh, we're supposed to be uh, the next morning. supposed to be at the airport. Uh, but, oh, guess what? This airport. There's strike. a strike, uh, so you got we got to get you a different van. So we we're like, no, and our and our tour manager, thank goodness, he's such a uh, an ass, like such a pill, like he's like, no, absolutely not, you know, he was just not gonna let this go, and he instead got us a bus, okay, but still we're in a vehicle and now we got to drive through the mountains, and if you know some of those mountains and some of those towns and there's a there's a lot there's a lot of iffy stuff that's happening sometimes up there. So now we're on the road. We got a driver. We don't know this guy. Uh, it's all being set up last minute. If we get there, we're gonna get there with barely any time to to eat or set up our stuff before the next show. But we did this entire tour, if I remember right, in this bus thing, and we come to find out that there were no strikes. There was nothing. Those flights were not canceled. He canceled it and put us on a van or a a, a bus because it made him so much more money. Yeah. Uh, long That's story how they short, would make a ton of their money. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Long story short, it was kind of a nightmare. It was, it was that scenario. We were driving through the mountains of, of Brazil for uh, whatever it was, a week or two. And uh, and then we got home and came to find out that guy just disappeared. Never never paid us. Uh, nothing, dude. Nothing. But at the time, we were just thinking, oh, what a bummer bunch of uh, si uh, you know situations. And But we've slept in a bus before. Now, this was not like a bus with bunks. This was... Uh, just like a school bus looking thing, you know, with seats. Yeah. So we're sleeping in the seats, and yeah, it sucks and it's uncomfortable, but we were, what, like 20-something, so it's going to be fine. But come to find out afterwards, like, we were in some really, really, really dangerous areas, driving on some really dangerous roads. Uh, and that whole thing, like, when you when you hear about it, you're like, damn, man, I'm a dad. Like, yeah. I, I, was in a weird, I was in a weird place doing weird shit. And this guy ripped not only ripped you off, but put you in bodily harm you know in the way of bodily harm and, and oh my god that makes me so mad to hear about it. i mean we, we've that's happened to us actually not in the same way but like we've been ripped off like whole tours from a south uh it was actually a, a puerto rican promoter he uh he caught it all no costa rican sorry not puerto rican sorry didn't mean to slag off puerto rico it was costa rica where the last time we, MXPX played there, we didn't, but he was like sort of in charge of our whole tour. I haven't even told this story. It's a big story. I won't go into it too much, but basically all his partners were in on it. So like if we'd go to, to, the, to the next town, he'd be like, yep, you know, that one guy is wiring all the money, da da da, gave me the wire, but it was a fake wire. When I didn't know oh. until I got home, you know, and the, the money's not there? What are you talking about? He handed me the wire. What? You know, like insane. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, Oh God! It, it the bus thing that we've done tours where we flew the whole time and we're like, oh man, this sucks. And we've done tours where we did the bus where you're like in a like a tourist type bus where you're sitting up and it kind of reclines a little bit, but it's not the full way. Yeah, that that was still pretty insane. Like all night long, you're just riding on this bus and you get to the the hotel the next day or whatever, but. There's no real good way to, to tour like that, to be honest. Like you, you're gonna end up, you're gonna end up super tired unless you do it like say like bands like Pearl Jam, where they play like one show, two days off, <laughs> two yeah. show, you know, one show, two days off. I mean, you know, bands like us, let alone budget wise, I don't want to spend all, all that time downtime. I just want to play, you know. But it's just yeah. so hard when you're traveling so far between every show. It's kind of like that. I mean, not in the same way, but the distance-wise in Canada can be rough. Yeah. When you're, when you're oh, going dude. Super I, uh, far. I remember doing that in a van, and I was you usually you know one of two or three primary drivers, and I remember driving those crazy long drives it, to this day. And I'll say it because it's it's a it's a PSA. Uh, don't drive tired, man. And sometimes you know when you're in a band, you just it's your job, and you're good at it, and whatever. But uh, I hallucinated, like full on hallucinated, and I, it's you know, I'd never done any drugs, never drank any alcohol, nothing, and I saw full on 
windmill, this big ass windmill. I'm in the <laughs> middle of nowhere. There's nothing out here, man. And I was just like, holy shit, look at this windmill coming up here. And Don Quixote style, it's moving. I might see a person by the barn and holy shit, it passed me. I looked in the mirror and there was nothing, man. I'm telling you, nothing. And then I'm squinting and I'm like, oh shoot, there's a car up there. I haven't seen a car in hours. I don't know where I was. It was like between like Winnipeg and and Calgary or something. It was just, not, you know what I'm talking about, like yeah. nine hours where the highway turns into dirt all of a sudden and then back to a highway. And I see this vehicle up there and I'm like, wow, another car. That's crazy. I might catch them in like 40 minutes if they're going slow enough. And all of a sudden I fucking blinked, Mike. And there was an ambulance in the middle of the highway stopped with the door open and a guy looking at me like I was about to kill him. And I went Whoop, like that. I mean, I two wheeled it, you know, oh my God. and I still to this day don't know if that was real or not. Right. And it scared me to death. It sobered me so much. I was just like, oh, my gosh, I almost killed me in the band. Like, how, t how, t how terrifying was that? You know, and I, like I said, wasn't drunk, had never d drank alcohol before. No drugs, no nothing. It was just tired. And I was hallucinating it because those Canadian drives are crazy, crazy yeah. long. And I, I made a mistake and drove too long. Canada, not that dangerous, but dangerous in a different way, obviously. <laughs> yeah, dude, it scared me to death. I still don't know if the ambulance was real. Yeah. <laughs> the windmill, there's no way. There's no way. There's been a lot of stories about, like, um, dog sled drivers, you know, up in Alaska, up in Canada, up in, North, you know, the great Arctic. And it's so cold and they're so tired that they'll almost be rescued by things, you know, like, like they'll be, like, passed out and then they'll see a person helping them you know I, I i read books uh, well we talked about this last time dog yeah, sledding yeah, yeah. books it's been a while but <laughs> but there's there's experiences these these dog got these sledders have where they remember they see this person doesn't say anything just helps them up helps them onto the sled gets the sled going rides with them the whole way and then at some point like when they like are almost home, they can see home or, you know, whatever, you know, the person's gone. And you're like, who, who was that? You know, it's like, they don't know if it was real. They're like, it probably wasn't, but they don't, it was very real to them, you know, and that, yeah. whatever that was, literally saved their life and those dogs' lives. But, you know, because the person was either injured or passing out in the cold, you know, talking like 60 below, 40 below weather up there. Uh. Damn. Everybody's got their windmill, man. Yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. I'm but that's what you that saw. Windmill. You saw that windmill. It was to keep you awake, I think. It was like yeah. your mind doing whatever it can do to not shut down, right? Like, and so it starts seeing things. It starts, oh, that's cool. And so that you, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. maybe Focus that's on it. this for a second. Right. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was wild. But yeah, the dangers of touring, man. And we all have those stories. We know people that have. Uh, it's been in accidents and different things, and it's it's just frightening. It's it's so frightening, and you don't realize till you get a little bit older. Like, man, how much, how much we did, how many miles we covered, man. Yeah. Like how many miles I've driven. And I even drove the bus for a while because I got a CDL. So like when when it was like time to get a little bit cheaper, but we didn't want to go back to a van or nothing. <laughs> we're like, oh, we'll hire a buddy's bus. You know, yeah. we'll lease the bus, and I'll drive it. And that was great. That was fun. I, I actually really enjoyed that. Every morning, I'd wake up super crazy early and just drive drive the bus. But uh, man, the miles we've covered, just want to dude. Thank bus God I mean, that's that's a whole conversation in and of itself. Being a bus driver, love it. Not that you were a bus it. driver, but like you probably. Well, I was. I was. I was a school bus driver. Were you really before the band? Before yeah, the band? Really. No way. Yeah, before yeah. the band. Special special school district uh, school bus driver. Were you like uh, what's the guy in The Simpsons? Uh... Otto. Dude, Otto. I had his hair. I had his hair. I I did. I I was like twenty or twenty one years old. I had big curly brown hair. I looked just like Otto with uh with blonde tips. Dude, why don't you have a song called Bus Driver? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. It was it was an interesting part of my life and. Uh, and it was cool. It was very, very cool getting to know a lot of those kids, man. Super, super cool kids. 
and uh, it definitely set me up to be an, a good tour bus driver because I still had the CDL and all the skills and the endorsements, the air brake, the passenger. I had all that. I still have it. All right, that's it. You're hired for the next tour. <laughs> oh, brother, I could make great money. I make more money. I thought about that. Actually, the funny thing is after I did that, uh, so we had a we had a driver get arrested uh, mid-drive in Arizona, right. and I had to drive the bus. <laughs> I had to drive the bus for that. <laughs> Was there a warrant so out for him or what? There was a warrant, yeah, in yeah. a different state. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and same guy didn't tell us that he had other warrants that weren't taken care of. So when we got to a border crossing, which he had crossed with us before successfully, they detained him and they said, hey, man, he's got a warrant in some, some state. We can't let this man in here. Can anybody drive the bus? And I was like, well, hell, I guess I can. But, you know, now I'm in Canada. I don't know where we're going. I forgot to ask about MapQuest directions or whatever it was. This is before mm -hmm. any of the – you know, the, the tech. And uh, so I drove it in Canada multiple times. Then we had a – I can talk about this now because it's been long enough. We had another driver who knew that he couldn't get in Canada, and he had heard about my CDL. So he made like an under-the-table deal where he's like, yo, don't tell my boss. Don't tell anybody. If the band is cool, I'm going to get a hotel in Buffalo. <laughs> You're going to drive the bus, and I'll give you 90% of my – or eighty percent of my pay for those days, and I was like, "Deal!" <laughs> Instantly, because I, I probably made more money driving that tour than I did playing guitar and singing. <laughs> That's mind blowing so, right now. Like, what? Yeah. How have we never uh, talked about this, dude? <laughs> I don't know. I forgot. It probably was one of those things where I was like, "I can't talk about this shit." <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's amazing. It out. That's a that's that's yeah. a great way to end it, dude. That is if respect. You need a driver, Mike. I'm good. Respect, my friend. Respect. <laughs> Moon Valjean, everybody. Thanks for doing it. Thanks for taking the time. Always. Thanks uh, for having me, Mike. I miss you. I, 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 we need to play some shows soon. I know. I think that next year is, is going to happen. Uh, what do you got coming up? What do you want to tell people about? Anything? No, you know, 2020 had me really reevaluate uh, just all my time and efforts and everything. And it's uh, it's been nice just getting to spend more time with my family before they, you know, before these kids are teenagers and they, you know, I hate their dad for no reason. It's been uh, it's been pretty magic, man. I've uh, I've sort of reconnected with myself a bit better, and hopefully that's the story for a lot of people turning turning the negative into a positive. Uh, so I don't have too much going on. Greek Fire has uh, a few shows um, getting set up here. If you haven't heard any Greek Fire music, please I encourage you uh, to 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 check it out. Do a deep dive. Do more than one song or or, or one single. Obviously, check out all the Goldfinger stuff. Uh, and uh, what else? I mean, I have a couple solo songs. I think one of them is is uploaded, uh, and a few will be released. Eh, whenever. I'm not in a rush. You know, yeah. I'm just kind of just kind of doing my thing. And Great. if you're into podcasts and talk shows, check out the Rizzuto Show. That is my morning show that I do here in St. Louis, uh, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Other than that, man, I'm just enjoying nature. I'm enjoying the seasons changing, and and trying to take my kids on as many hikes as possible. So get outside. Get outside. Well said, my friend. All right, that's it. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you again for having me. Always, always. Mm -hmm.